Hi, I'm Eli Yaman for the Jazz Academy. Welcome to Music is Movement. And today we're going to look at the bridge of Perdido. Now you got the chords D7, G7, C7, and F7. And if you played them in root position, you'd get this. Of course, I know a lot of you have been practicing your inversions, so you should be able to do this with the inversions. But I want to show you an exercise that's going to get you ready to do good movement with two hands. We're going to walk up the scale. I'm going to take a C scale, and we're going to play the root in the left hand, and then we're going to double the sevenths in the right with the third in the middle. You dig? Now go right up the C major scale. Now the other way we could do that is double the thirds with the seventh in the middle. Check this out. Got a nice full sound, right? Well, let's see how we apply this now in the bridge of Perdido. Let's take D7, and we're going to play the root in the left hand, double the seventh in the right with the third in the middle. See, there's a real respectable D7. Now, if we want to move to a G7 with good movement, we can just do this. See? You got D7 with the sevens on the outside and the third in the middle, and then you go to a G7 with the thirds doubled and the seventh in the middle, and look at that beautiful, it's almost like this chord saying, move me. And then that one's saying, move me too. There's your C7 with double the sevens with the third in the middle, going to an F7, the thirds doubled and the seventh in the middle, okay? And this is the nature of dominant seventh chords. They tell you, they want to be moved. That's what they, why they're called dominant, because they, they, they dominate. They want you to go somewhere. So D7 says, move me to a G7. Move me to a C7. Move me to an F7. All right? Now, when you're playing with different instruments, you need to be able to play chords in different registers. All right, so you need to have at least two or three good ways of playing each set of voicings. So that, say, if a flute player is soloing, those voicings are going to be good. But if an alto saxophone soloist, or maybe, yeah, maybe like an alto or tenor maybe, you might want to bring your voicings up a little bit. And I want to show you a cool way of doing that. In the left hand, I'm going to just play the shell. I'm going to play the third and the seventh. There's the third and seventh of D7. Then I move that to a G7, seven, third. See, I'm leaving the, this one, I'm leaving the roots out. Okay, you let the bass player do that. Then we get to the next chord, third of the C7 and the seventh to an F7. So you just move down chromatically, really. All right, so you can practice that real good with just the left hand. Now on the right hand, I'm going to add an octave, maybe with the fifth in the middle. Now the fifth is always optional. You don't need the fifth to define the chord. That can be done with the root and the third and the seventh. But we're going to add it just for some extra texture. There's a D7. Sounds pretty good, right? And look how simple it is. Three, seven, one, five, one. Okay? Now, change to a G7. I just moved a couple notes. I did the thing in the left hand that I showed you before. In the right hand, I just moved to a G. So I've got now seven, three, five, one, five. And then C7. Three, seven, one, five, one, to an F7. All right?
-hmm. Now that you got the chords good and the movement good, it's all about the rhythm. So let's, let's practice some good rhythm, shall we? And don't be afraid to play on the one. Please don't be afraid. Because for everybody else to syncopate, we need to know where that one is. One, two, one, two, three, four.